Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Welcome back, listeners. You know, I always appreciate you giving me a little bit of your time every week. Today is no exception to my every week. I tell you what a great episode we've got coming up. This uh, with me is Dr. Jacob Tiedelbaum. I hope I got that right. I like the title (laughs) of a book. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. And we're going to be talking about how to prevent dementias. And in honor of that, I would like to dedicate this episode to a friend of a friend who passed away today from Alzheimer's. He was a veteran, a father, a husband, a really good friend, and he was the same age as me. So talking about preventing dementia, that's a good one today. So thanks for joining me. Yeah, it's great to be with all of you today because, you know, one of the biggest things facing us, once we start to get our 50s and 60s, you know, people worry about a lot of things, but losing our minds is one of the big ones. Um, That's kind of a traumatic concept. Um, But here's what we're not going to hear about. What we hear about are, well, there's a $25,000 a year drug that may slow dementia. Should Medicare cover it? Should they be? And there's uh, that's what everybody hears about it with. Did you hear about massive studies, the Harvard study showing that just taking a multivitamin Simple multivitamin was probably more effective than the $25,000 a year medication. And today we can go through 10 easy things you can do to decrease your risk of dementia dramatically, probably by over 80%, at least to certainly slow it down quite a bit. Um, And they're easy. But why we don't hear about them? Well, there's a really important problem with all of these treatments we're going to talk about today. They're dirt cheap. (laughs) <laughs> and that's why nobody is pushing it out in the news media, pushing it to doctors, and certainly not going to pay the $400 million needed to get the FDA imprint that says, yes, you can talk about these. So, yeah, it's we have freedom of speech if you're willing to pay the entry fee when it comes to medicine. It's $400 million. <laughs> Oh, pocket uh, is, change. is the cost. So, you know, the, the trick is languaging it in a certain way. You can't talk about treating dementia. You can talk about improving memory. It's a funny thing. So we, if I'm doing a little verbal Texas two-step today, please forgive me. Okay. Uh, but what we'll do is talk about the research and what it shows. Sounds terrific. Well, I just read an article that basically said her father was diagnosed with dementia and seven words from Medicare shocked her. And the seven words were, we don't think uh, dementia is a medical issue, which makes my brain want to explode right out of my head. So well, that's, that's, if that's not an incentive to take care of ourselves, because we're not going to have help on that end. And, you know, I have a lot of friends that are older than me. Some of them are now getting to Medicare age. And they're like, I don't want our children to have to take care of us. And I'm like, well, you know, 70% of us are going to need care before we die. So... What's your plan? So, you know, this, I mean, no, this... Medicare actually does a pretty decent job. You know, it has its issues. And as a physician, I would, did not participate in Medicare because it doesn't allow the doctor to spend time with you. But it's really, given what they have to work with, they're doing a good job. But the key thing is not to rely on Medicare and not to rely on the medical establishment. What you have <laughs> is a, a half a million wonderful people, even more than that who have no clue about anything but what the drug companies are feeding us in terms of information. So we're going to give you an ounce of prevention today. Simple things you can do. How about 10 simple things you can do to keep your brain? Sounds good. So you told me (laughs) that at autopsy, about half of the people that were diagnosed with Alzheimer's turned out not to have that. No, it didn't didn't have any of it. They had other causes of the dementia. Which means okay. these things may well have been preventable. And even if somebody has Alzheimer's, a big part of the dementia may still be coming from something else that's preventable. I just recently had somebody tell me they didn't think my mom had Alzheimer's or only had Alzheimer's because her progression was so slow. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure I entirely agree with that. And unfortunately, I had planned on donating her brain to science We need to make that process easier because she fell and broke her leg and died at the start of the pandemic. And I had no idea how to donate a brain. 
And then when I remembered I had planned on that, it was too late. So <laughs> let's 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 yep. go back let's, to let's avoid all of that. <laughs> yeah, let's. T- yeah, because w- what I've learned is if you want to donate the brain, they give it back to you after the funeral home is done with you. So that's not really something we want to do. So where should we start? So you're in Hawaii. Okay. Should mm-hmm. we start with um, light Sunshine. exposure and vitamin D? Absolutely. It, uh, research has shown that simply getting light exposure, and don't worry, say, well, how about if I'm up in the Northeast? I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. I understand <laughs> that. Um, but they have these light boxes. They're called happy boxes for seasonal affective disorder. Not super expensive. But if you have an area by your workplace, like your computer, you can just put that light box on for 45 minutes in the morning, and you will dramatically cut your risk of dementia. Or... Go outside in the sunshine for walks. The current advice to avoid sunshine is insane. It contributes probably to tens of thousands of deaths each year. The proper advice is avoid sunburn, not sunshine. If you think you're going to get sunburned, put on the lotion, put, you know, put on a sunblock. But otherwise, the sunshine is healthy. It's good for you. I just recently heard and read that we should actually go out in the sun without sunglasses on because that's good for us. But I also know I'm a retired portrait photographer, so I spent many years squinting into the sun because I had this beautiful background that people liked. And, you know, I had the lights to light up their faces, but I was looking into the sun and I have just a touch of cataracts. And the mm-hmm. eye doctor basically said, don't go outside without your sunglasses on. So, like, and, and, okay. what I'll, and what I'll say is, do what feels best to you. <laughs> you know, I can give you, if, yes, I, I'm a sun gazer and I've written in convertibles for most of my life. Uh, so I'm a rag topper and I don't like sunglasses. I'll sit there and look into the sunshine and may I get cataracts sometime? Yeah. If I do, or there a problem, I'll get them fixed. But and if you prefer sunglasses, some people wear sunglasses if they're in the dark closet. That's okay too. <laughs> you know, don't make your life this automaton that these different medical myths said, and I can't have salt and I must. By the way, avoiding salt is a medical myth. The main benefit of salt restriction is you die younger, and the Medicare and Social Security systems thank you. Unless people have heart failure or kidney disease. Uh, the effect of salt restriction. If you totally salt restrict from a lavish salt diet to a intolerably low salt diet, uh, if you're black, it lowers blood pressure three millimeters. If you're white, it lowers blood pressure less than one millimeter, mm. or depending on the study, one to two millimeter. It's it's potassium deficiency is a problem, not salt excess. So what part of what we're going to teach you today? is enjoy life. What are the things you really need to be doing? Not these medical myths, you know, that are not based on science. We just keep repeating them. And the science says, these are myths. They are not true. <laughs> and we keep repeating them anyway, just because it's old habit. So we're okay, going to well, give you your life that, back too. <laughs> that sounds good. Well, there was another myth that you're busting. It's, it's also been a little bit busted, but you're uh, very strong on eating more eggs, which in my household, I'm not sure we could really do. Yep. We, we we eat a lot of eggs in this household, so I guess that's good for us. So care to explain yep. the eating the eggs? Well, there are now uh, over six studies, probably close to a dozen, where they give six eggs a day for six weeks. And so you can only imagine how much that makes this cholesterol skyrocket, right? You know how much cholesterol goes up when people do that? Uh, minimal? Oh, zero? Okay. Goose egg. <laughs> Nothing. Eating cholesterol, eating cholesterol does not raise cholesterol. You eat it. If your body doesn't want it, it makes less. It doesn't affect it. But what you have on eggs, and the eggs are uh, choline, which is what the memory molecule acetylcholine is made of. So if you eat more eggs every day, the research shows, and it doesn't have to be a lot, one or two eggs is plenty, your memory will be better. Well, my memory is really good, and we eat a lot of eggs, mostly because well, my husband likes to do bodybuilding, and he's mm-hmm. very big on, I got to have my protein, I got to have my protein, I got to have my protein, which I am 99% certain he gets more than plenty. <laughs> well, here's the thing. As we age, we have what's called sarcopenia. We get loss of muscle mass. Mm-hmm. So there's an argument that even though we get more protein in the United States than just about any place in the world, um, 
if you're going into your 50s, 60s, and 70s, there's an argument. If your body is asking for it, give it. And the best protein in the world, uh, they're called complete proteins, short of eating another human being, which I don't recommend, is eating eggs. They are most closely resemble the protein balance found in the human body. Eggs are a healthy food. Butter is a healthy food. Salt is healthy food. If you're going to do milk, go with a whole milk. Skim milk is associated with higher diabetes risk. Milk is a reasonable food. Um, chocolate is a health food. Um, you, you'll see, no, we'll look at it. We look at the statin medications. And people who do not have a history of angina or a heart attack, they have high cholesterol. The statins decrease heart attack risk 2%. Maybe okay. five. They're trying to argue that it's a 10% drop in heart attack mortality, but it's closer to 2 to 5% if you were to look at the data. Eating a little square of chocolate each day is associated with a 45% lower risk of heart attack death. So I'm going with the and chocolate 100% myself. 100% increase in happiness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you have to distinguish between, and I love the pharmaceutical industry. They're sweet people. They're nice people. They hire cheerleaders and and jocks. They're really good looking. I mean, I mean, I'm a science geek, and I I would have these beautiful women walk into my office telling me the pharmaceuticals, you know, and they were like fawning, and it's like, God, one of one of the bright spots of being a doctor. Um, but most, how did the Harvard Journal editor, past editor say, most continuing medical education is slick pharmaceutical advertising and masquerading as science. So I don't take money from any of these companies. So I'm happy to give you the inside scoop of what the research is actually showing. Okay. So I know some medications can actually Increase your risk of dementia. You mentioned one of them, I think, at the beginning. The acid blockers, PPIs. Uh -huh. um, so Prilosec, Nexium, those kind are associated with, as much as in different studies, a 44% increased risk of dementia. Uh, they also, they're deadly. I mean, you get COVID. I think some of the studies show 300% higher risk of getting COVID and dying from it. Um, where you can just substitute Pepsid which is another over-the-counter medication, which can be very effective. You can up the dose if you need, which has no increased risk of dementia, which actually helps fight COVID. And the studies show that people who take the Pepsid do better. But again, you won't hear about that because it's cheap. No bad guys here. There's no cabal of people. It's just the way the system works. So, um, so but I, I'm... My interest is what does the research show and throwing a good dollop of common sense. So just switch over, switch over. And then, you know, my app cures A to Z. That's a free app. You look up indigestion and there's a $2 upgrade, but that, this is all on the free app. And it'll tell you how to naturally help digestion uh, so you don't have indigestion and you don't have the, the burning. So, uh, again, simple things. A lot of medications, especially antihistamines, uh, Benadryl, those are fine. If they help you sleep and they're good, you know, go with them. But if you're starting to develop Alzheimer's issues or dementia issues, maybe time to switch away, if you can, from things that block acetylcholine. These are mostly antihistamines and urine spasm blockers. Urine spasm blockers. Pe people who uh, <laughs> laugh so hard the triggers run down the legs. Oh, which is not an uncommon problem for women of a certain age. Yeah. Um, so are there any, I know there's there's other drugs that are- Well, most, you can go through many. And, and <laughs> what I recommend people do is if you're starting to see signs of a moderate um, or mild cognitive impairment, the, the early dementia, sit down with your doctor. And when you go to your doctor, you have like six minutes, maybe 10 minutes for a visit. They mm -hmm. have just enough time to write out a prescription and give you a new one. That's easy. And you feel satisfied. They did something and on to the next person. And then that good looking drug rep comes and goes, you sold another one of mine. I love you. You know, and so, you know, but what you want to do is find a doctor and make an appointment for even a full hour or whatever to go through all of your medications and see, are there any that one I could get rid of or even be off of for a week to see if my memory improves? 
to see if that's a side effect of one or a combination are contributing to the poor memory because that takes time to wean you off of medicine. They probably didn't start two thirds of them. They're from other doctors. They don't know what they're for. They have to go through the records. It's worth taking that time. And it may have to be a holistic doctor that does it because they will take the time to see what you can get rid of and slowly don't just start wholesale dropping medications. Say, Dr. Tatelbaum said, stop the medicine. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm saying sit down with your doctor and see which ones you can slowly wean off. Well, you can make friends with your pharmacist and do the same thing. He doesn't know or she doesn't know why you're on them. I would hope you'd be able to tell him, not you as a doctor, you, the patient taking the medications. Well, if you can't get your doctor to ask the pharmacist, but it's the, I'm all for pharmacists and naturopaths and all the rest. I'm all for competition in medicine because we do a horrible job. And the more competition we can get, the better. But this is one where the doctor really has to know the medical history to be able to guide you properly on what medications to start coming off of. The pharmacist doesn't have access to that one. Okay, because I had a whole conversation with a pharmacist about deprescribing, so that's interesting. But if you can't find a holistic doctor, at least talk to the pharmacist, okay. and they might be able to give you information to take back to your doctor, doctor. Perfect. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, it's all, we got to figure out what works for each individual person, which makes this even more of a challenging disease to take care of and prevent. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about eggs and medicines and sunlight. <laughs> And so that's packs. three. What's, what's, what's number four? Uh, multivitamins. Okay. The, a Harvard study called the Cosmo study showed that simply taking a, and this is a bare bones multivitamin, I recommend something much stronger in B vitamins of folic acid, decreased progression of dementia by 60%. If there was a medication that decreased the progression, they'd be charging 50000 and nobody would say two words about it. But being a multivitamin, you probably, I'm sure you heard that on the front page of the paper, but it gets advertising from the, the pharmaceutical industry. And, and every time they say something good about natural remedies, they lose advertising, by the way. Uh, I, I work with a lot of the media. I'm in the media a lot. They like me for some reason, even though I tell people <laughs> turn it off. Um, but I'll know the, and the publishers, and they tell me that the pharmaceutical advertising contracts often come with a clause stating you will have, that the a magazine agrees to have nothing positive about natural remedies anywhere in the issue in accepting this advertisement for the pharmaceutical. Be aware this is not two separate things that don't overlap each other. This is why most reporting on natural remedies is both inaccurate and negative in media outlets that take pharmaceutical advertisements. They're all good people. I love them. They're good people, but understand the propaganda of how, how we're getting information fed. Take a multivitamin. I like one called Clinical Essentials. Uh, not so I take myself two tablets a day. Uh, powerful folic acid, B vitamin, magnesium, key nutrients needed to protect the brain and to enhance, enhance it. So get your multivitamin in the morning as well. And then while you're sleeping, um, you may have heard that decreased sense of smell, the inability to smell common things like coffee and other uh, common scents may be associated as a sign. It could just be that you're having a stuffy nose and a little bit of candida or sinus problems, but it also can be associated with loss of the nerve cells uh, associated with smelling. Um and it's a, it's a sign that dementia may be a bit higher risk. And some researchers wondered, well, I wonder if that goes in both directions. And what they did, where you lose smell, you lose memory, but what if you increase the smell coming in? And okay. you trigger an improvement in memory. And they, for two hours a night, they had a little diffuser. You've seen these diffusers where it has a little wick or a thing and has the, the different essential oils and smells. And they put a different one in the room each night uh, over the week for, I forget if it was about six or eight weeks that they did that. And they found that that exercising of the sense of smell actually increased the brain size, the or slowed the progression by 226%. This was probably one of the strongest things. So just having a little diffuser in your bedroom, on your nightstand, that has pleasant 
smell. So it doesn't have to be the smell of poo or anything. It can be pleasant <laughs> smells. You know? um, and just a little diffuser stick so you can get, they have the ones that have the little mist diffusers. And just set a timer for two hours a night. doesn't hurt if you go over. And, and what the study shows is that that improves memory. Um, simple, simple, simple things. Well, that's interesting. So far, I'm doing all of these. I diffuse lavender oil in a humidifier at night. Help um, you sleep. Un unlike where you live, it's very dry here. I'm an hour <laughs> south of Lake Tahoe. Very dry. Although today that says the humidity is 80%. I'm not feeling it. Um, you know, so between aging skin and dry dry air and the heaters in the winter, you know, the humidifier is quite helpful. So I love it with the um, the lavender in it. So yeah. we keep it. Uh, lavender, can... which helps you sleep. It's still some eucalyptus in it, which will open up the sense of smell. Find the smell that you like and go ahead and use a few drops. Let it be yep. fun. Well, you can use... Um, what is it like oranges and peppermint essential oils in the early in the day to kind of mm -hmm. get you going? Yep, cinnamon. So. Mm -hmm. Ooh, cinnamon too. Ooh, that would make me want to eat though. So no, I can't do cinnamon. <laughs> eat chocolate. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta be careful how much chocolate I eat because like there's a there's a diminishing and, return between yeah. brain benefit and getting getting overweight it, it, again. It's quality, not quantity. It's uh, it's a little bit goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be darker. The darker, the better, and the darker it gets, the more less sweet it gets. But the less sweet is good. You want to avoid the excess sugar, but again, find the one that you like the best. Um, if you want some good sugar-free chocolates, ERND, uh, Lilies, there are a bunch of sugar-free ones. The only thing is they are sweetened with maltitol, which has a laxative effect. So for those of you who would like to be a bit more regular, you hit two birds with one stone. But uh, <laughs> but if you find you're like, eyes are going wide and you're making a mad dash, then, then no, <laughs> don't use that. So. <laughs> I use the Lilies No Sugar Added Chocolate Chips, dark chocolate mm -hmm. chips, mm -hmm. when I bake. Yes. So and they're Tasty. good. You and you don't get so much of the the laxative effect that I've never. I know that's a pr an issue. Never had that issue with the cookies or the you know whatever. For okay, most so people, that, it's uh, a side benefit, but this they just know <laughs> that if you get into gas or urgency, cut it back. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay yeah. So we're, are we up to five now? I lost yeah. count. Okay. I, instead of the count, I'll 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 lead you through if you want. So, um, hearing aids. 8% of dementia, of cases of dementia, could be prevented by simply go to Costco, go to your hearing aid center, have your ears checked, and get a hearing aid if you need it. They're not like your grandpa's hearing aids, where everybody thought they were, he was happy because they heard him whistling as he walked around. It was his hearing aids whistling. They, these don't do that anymore. And they can hide so people don't see them. Um, and... There are 1800 a pair for the top of the line at Costco. You don't have to pay 7000 You know, you're getting the same thing pretty much at the, you know, at the at price. So go where you want to go for it. But be have your hearing and have your vision checked and have them addressed if they're poor. Don't sit there. You know, I put off hearing aids, kind of a family hearing loss. Most of my family had hearing aids in their 40s. Ooh. And I was like, I'm not doing that. And when I finally got it uh, eight years ago, it was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. All the sound I want all the time or like just there. And nobody knows I have them in. So it, it's do that. <laughs> if you need them. So that brings up a question. Why are people so resistant to, you know, like, yeah, we don't only, necessarily want glasses, but we also would like to be able to see and drive and those kind of things. Why are we so resistant to hearing aids? Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about NeuroReserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now, fruit usually did the trick, but not always. 
One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. The old Karen Gage used to be associated with being an old fart. Okay. Um, you know, and that's those, they're not the same thing anymore. It's, they're just really subtle and really effective and they don't make all these noises and it's just like wonderful. We have a friend who has Bluetooth hearing aids attached to an app on his iPhone. Yep. And he loves it. Yep. So I need yep. to get my husband checked because we used to DJ when we were young. <laughs> and <laughs> you he's hard of them. hearing in one, <laughs> on one side. But I think it's selective sometimes. It's like whatever side is pointed at me. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how that is. I, you know, like, yeah, that, that, but that's one of those unknown mysteries of, of life and science. So, yeah, definitely worth doing that and getting the eyes and the ears checked. I know um, that I know the hearing partly is too because if you can't hear well, you can't participate in social situations. Yes, yeah, so you sit know there why? going, go ahead. wondering yeah. what people are saying, nodding like a bobble dog or bobblehead yeah. dog. No, what, that's... what's the, what's the issue with eyesight? I've got really strange. I have lazy eye, and so it's I don't, the same I don't, thing. I don't see normal. Oh, because we the can't less, participate. Less data you have coming in. Ah. The less signal your brain has to work with, uh, everything we see out here, this is just projections of our mind from the electrical signals coming in from our nose and from our ears and from touch and from all these different things. The brain puts it all together and like a wonderful artificial intelligence virtual reality projects it all out there and it will project whatever it thinks is going on. And as the data changes, suddenly it's going to see something totally different. I'd love, I could relate I'd, to that. <laughs> yeah, I love noticing that. Uh, you know, I look. I remember even when I was a kid, I'd look and I'd see what I thought was a, a bird on a wire in a split second on a telephone wire, and then I realized, no, that's an airplane. And when I thought it was a bird, I saw a bird on a wire. And a tenth of a second later, no, it was an airplane, and there was no change in the back. And your mind is trying to create reality from the data coming in. And if that data is weak, eyesight hearing is weak. That's why we're more prone to falls. There's a number of reasons. But the sensation of where we are when we stop standing on things isn't as strong. And sometimes you may find just touching the side of a doorway adds so much data that you're not as likely to fall when you make a turn. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a little thing. So optimize that, that kind of sensory input in ways that are easy and feel good. That's why when they, they the trainers are when they're helping you with balance, or like stand on one foot and put your arms out, and then you know you keep progressing to when you close your eyes. And it's amazing how as soon as you close your eyes, you practically fall over on your head. Mm -hmm. We forget how much we rely on these others because the sense of touch is decreasing, that sensory input. So the more you can augment sensory input from the eyes and the ears and the rest, you basically support all these senses support each other. You're giving your body and your mind what it needs to go, no problem here. You know? <laughs> okay, what's next? Okay, so next, uh, um, we talk sometimes about the mind protocol uh, as um, there's the dementia protocol. But if you do quick M-I-N-D, uh, M is metabolism. If you have low thyroid despite normal blood tests or high thyroid, you increase the risk of dementia 200 to 800 mm. percent. Um, so you want the thyroid levels to be optimized. Most doctors think that optimized means that the blood test is in the normal range. And I like sort of 400 doctors or so at a time. And I love asking them the simple question. And have you noticed how most doctors, they'd almost be happy if you stayed home and just sent in the blood test and let them see if you're in normal range and not have to bother with, well, here's how, you know, with all the talking and chatter. Um, so they relied immensely on the blood test whether it's in normal range. So ask them this question, where does the normal range come from? And it's like 400 deer in the headlights. <laughs> I have no idea, you know, and they don't know. 
we're given the That's impression. Yeah, and we're, it's never stated, but we're given the impression that a group of wise elders with big, long, white beards and hair and professor hats sit around and go, well, if it's in the strange, it's just not a problem. You can forget about it. You've ruled out that diagnosis. Good going. It's not that. And there's <laughs> no such thing. I finally, you know, had to go through and go to the National Bureau of Lab Standards, and I found a little small thing. It said the normal range is derived by what's called two standard deviations. You take 100 people, and the 95 in the middle is defined as a normal range. So normal range for shoe sizes, for example, if I was doing it that, would be 6 to 13. Normal range for income, if you made $8,100 a year, you'd be in the normal range, unless you're the doctor, then it's not okay. But for everybody else, it's in the normal range, no problem. So I don't know about you, but if I put on a size 6 shoe, or you put on my size 12, this in the normal range. The doctor will say there's no problem. I don't think it's going to fit. And the same. So you're, you're not going to be able to walk, and I'm going to fall over my feet. <laughs> there you go. So a thyroid dose, and you need a holistic doctor if you have access to one to treat you instead of just a blood test. If you had tired, achy, weight gain, cold intolerance, or even had unexplained infertility, you know things like that. The these are all symptoms of low thyroid, um, and may deserve a trial of the bioidentical prescription thyroid uh, adjusted to the dose that feels the best, keeping the free T4 blood test, blah, 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 on the normal range for safety, yada, yada, yada. The, the holistic doctors will know that. Um, testosterone in men, if it's over 240, the doctor will say you're fine, but you're not. If the testosterone is under 500, especially if you have high cholesterol, prediabetes, a spare tire around your waist, um, your memory is starting to go. These are all bioidentical testosterone to bring the level up to six, 700 or higher, even a bit, um, can help all of that. So, but again, most doctors would go, nope, you're not in the lowest 2%. Have a good day, Joe. Yeah. Yep. That is exactly what my husband heard. Yep. Uh, we don't deal with that. The guy at, <laughs> So all all through COVID, when we were at home, was going to bed at eight thirty. I mean, it was like literally like living with a lump, <laughs> and and he was pre diabetic and he was overweight and just didn't have any have any energy. And it's a hundred percent different. He's been on TRT testosterone mm. replacement therapy for like two and a half years, almost two and a half years, or yep. one and a half years. Excuse me. The, the cream or the pellets. Don't do injections. Um, in the injections, shoot it high. Here we go. Woo! And then for about two days a week, you're just right. And then you're going menopausal for the last and moody. So the creams or the pellets are the best way to go. Yep. He uses the cream. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Good to know. Mm -hmm. um, what about, I, I, I'm also on hormone replacement therapy because I spent 40 years having hormonal migraines every month. If I and was I a woman. How, yeah. Pardon me? Yeah. If I was a woman, I'd be on it. And isn't it funny how the doctors had no idea what was causing your migraines, and then they put you on the estrogen during your periods, and they went away. It's like most people with menstrual migraines. I might have to think on that one. It's been a while since. <laughs> since uh, yeah, I'm on the other end of that spectrum. Now I'm gonna have to think about it. But yeah, no, they they attribute it to stress or or what I ate or what I didn't eat or blah blah blah. And, and it only happens on day 14 with ovulation and when you're having your periods. What a coincidence! Yeah, but it still happened when like when I was menopausal, and I had okay. so there was a month last year where I my head hurt so bad I literally couldn't complete a thought, and I thought. I have three generations of dementia in my maternal history, and this is BS. And my husband had already been on his hormone replacement therapy. We use a specialty clinic, mm -hmm. and they take a lot of blood to test everything. And it was interesting to watch the changes in my blood levels, because at one point, my cholesterol went from normal to too high. And they're like, that's because you're not getting enough testosterone. I'm like, oh, okay. I thought that was for one one thing, and they're like, "Nope, it's for these things." I'm like, "Okay, I'll I'll be better about using it when I'm supposed to." Mm -hmm. And use the bioidenticals, which it sounds like they are. All of the estrogen patches are bioidentical. The prescription Prometrium is a bioidentical progesterone. Where, in my opinion, the Premarin and Provera. Well, I I don't want to get sued by because I say they're poison. <laughs> so let me just say that, in my humble opinion, there's no way if I was a woman I would let those. Cross my lips. Um, 
they are marketed because they're patentable mm -hmm. and therefore they could be pricey. Uh, your body wants the same hormone of made most of your life. You want the bioidentical hormones. It can be patches. It can be creams. It can be vaginal. Um, and adding a little testosterone, as you noted, can make a nice difference with it. Energy and libido. <laughs> and <laughs> regulating my cholesterol. Because I was things. really bummed. I'm like, dang it, I'm going to have to go on statins. And I don't want to do that because... Uh, you I'm, don't have to go on statins. Yeah, nope. You know, right? is... Nancy Regan said, just say no. Yep. If, if people, if we have a history of heart attack or stroke, absolutely be on the statin. If you have a history of angina where you're having chest pain that it is from the heart, absolutely be on statin. Those are lifesavers. If you have a cholesterol of 247 and the doctor is trained because that good looking grub comes in and goes, put them on, put them on, put them on, put them on, you know. And the professors at the conferences are paid by these companies for this $29 billion a year. I don't want to say scam. Um, put them all on a field, put everybody on chattens and their hubcats and your cat, you're a quack. I mean, this is literally the messaging that your doctor is getting. And so forgive the dramatic thing, but this is kind of how it's being put out there. I, I don't put my patients on statins for cholesterol under 280 if they don't have a history of heart disease. I've known not family history, but known heart attack or stroke. The data just doesn't support it to me. That makes sense. We also have a a litigation issue and patients wanting to immediately feel better or be better or be fixed. So it's not just pharmaceuticals, but they're not helping. <laughs> No, yeah. that's know, my humble opinion. You know, medicines used wisely are a wonderful tool in the toolkit, but most of them are not used based on the science. They're used based on profit, and the doctors don't know the difference. So, anyways, so let's go. We just have a, a few more minutes left. So I just want to go through a couple other quick things. Infections. If you have silent infections, a chronic sinusitis, you don't need antibiotics for that. That's a fungal overgrowth issue. Uh, my book, From Fatigue to Fantastic, we'll talk about that. Clear the infection. Do you have a bladder infection? Simple way to screen. Get a glass or plastic cup that's clear, pee in it, and you should be able to read the pages of a book or a magazine or a newspaper through that urine. It's going to be yellow but clear. If it's cloudy where you can't read the words, you probably have a little infection. Um, look up in Cures A to Z. Is some supplements like D-Manos and stuff like that can just wash it out. But those can drag down your mind. You know how when you have an infection or a bug, your mind feels cloudy. Mm -hmm. um, nutritional support, we talked about the multivitamin, cut down sugar, you know, increase your eggs, salt, <laughs> enjoy it, I think, to the level that your body is asking for it. Because, you know, overly controlling blood pressure in somebody in their 70s is a real bad idea. There's this push like with cholesterol things. What's the normal blood pressure when there is none? You know, it's like zero. Yes. You know, no, you're not getting circulation to the brain. I like about four, 140 over 80, 145 over 85, not 120 over 70 in people who are in their 70s. Um, well, it so, increases fall risks too. Yes. And we don't want that. <laughs> no. So, but there's also curcumin. Um, the seventy percent less Alzheimer's in India than in the United States, and that's been attributed to the curries, the curcumin mm. or turmeric. But again, you have to eat an Indian diet to get that effect because curcumin is not that absorbed. There's a supplement called Curamed, C U R A M E D. You can get it on Amazon, any health food store. Um, Seven hundred fifty milligrams. I take one of those a day just because the health benefits. I feel great, but the health benefits are so insane in terms of decrease. Well, I'm, I don't want to put myself at legal risk by talking about what the research shows with it. But I think to help maintain brain function and keep things safe, um, the CuraMed, if I feel, you know, for me, it's 750 a day. If I had mild cognitive impairment, I'd probably up that to twice a day. Um and then we talked about the drugs. But I want to wrap up, Jennifer, with one other very important concept. Those of you who have chronic pain, first of all, pain is optional. It's not a normal part of aging. It is optional unless you rely on your physician. As physicians, we have virtually no training in pain management except to give arthritis medicines, uh, anti-epileptic drugs, and don't uh, Tylenol, and don't let them fool you into giving narcotics if you don't have cancer, and if there's something profitable to operate on, go for it. That's the extent of our medical education 
Uh, so I'm, I'm pain management. So it's no surprise that one quarter of Americans suffer needlessly with pain. But the research shows that the chronic pain increases the risk of dementia. That's probably it. preventable. If you go to a holistic doctor, and you can just ask your local health food store who's a good holistic doctor in the area, or go to ifm.org, Institute for Functional Medicine.org, they'll have a list of a thousand plus holistic doctors. Ask for low dose naltrexone. They will know what it is. It's a cheap prescription. It's not going to be covered by your insurance, but it's like 80 cents a day. You can actually get it from the pharmacy where it's covered and mix your own. My book talks about that. That's a good thing over my shoulder there. Um, but the low dose naltrexone, after two months, one, it can decrease the pain, but mostly it decreases the effect on the brain that likely triggers dementia. And a simple thing, um, if you have arthritis, pain, uh, glucosamine and chondroitin, as effective as Celebrex, despite their twisting the data. Um, it, but in the head-on studies, they were pretty equivalent. Uh, but instead of getting massive increased risk of cardiovascular disease and things like dementia, you get side benefits from the natural things. So I would take Cura Min, and be mobile. Those are two things you can find on Amazon. Give them six weeks to work for arthritis. You'll find your pain goes way down for the arthritis. Um, and you can just go with these different things. Um, the pain goes down. If the pain persists, the low dose naltrexone. Uh, this is all largely preventable. And so start with the simple things. You like eggs, you like chocolate. Again, moderation for the chocolate. Eat all you want for the eggs. You like salt. Enjoy that. You know, like smells, put some in your room. You know, uh, this, these don't have to be difficult things. You know, get a multivitamin, get clinical essentials, and maybe a cure med uh, one a day. Simple things you throw in to the diet and to your lifestyle. Go out in the sunshine for walks. Use your brain, exercise it, do puzzles, do whatever it is you enjoy that exercises your brain. And then enjoy your life. You know, yep. you, knowing you've done what you need to do and your brain is protected. That sounds terrific. And what is the name of your book? From Fatigued to Fantastic. But for those of you who don't have fatigue or fibromyalgia, um, if you do have pain, get the book. It'll tell you how to get pain free. Uh, but otherwise, my free app, Cures A to Z, for most of the health conditions they have, it'll give you the quick, short, and sweet, and it's free. Is and, that in the uh, app store? Yeah. Awesome. I'll make sure all that stuff is linked so people don't have to hunt. I very much appreciate this. It was like, it's almost like a little sprint on how to help keep our brains healthy. And I really mm -hmm. appreciate it. I know you've got a client meeting to head to, so I will not tie you up any longer. So thank you so much for, for sharing today. Jennifer, everybody, aloha from the big island of Hawaii. Thank <laughs> you. I'm going to get there one of these days. Be well. Bye-bye. <laughs> Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your podcasts.